Grandmaster Zhu Yi just won one of the best and shortest chess games so far this year in a dazzling fashion in the Pro Chess League semifinals. In a tight match decided by a one game margin, he won with black in just 19 moves. In chess terms, a victory this short is known as a miniature. And I'd argue this may be the prettiest miniature that I've seen so far this century. The beauty of his achievement was not lost on Zhu as he was captured on camera punching his fists in celebration. White Grandmaster Pranesh opens the game here with one e4, and after e5, we see the players venture into a four knights variation. This is obviously so called because the four knights are developed. Now, this is known to be a drawish variation, particularly because of the move d4 right here, which I think is the best move. Instead, we see bishop b5, which is the most popular move, but I think it's not the best because of the response knight d4, now played. This is the Rubenstein counter gambit. And this is not even the most popular response for black, but it is the best scoring, and it is the move that Stockfish 15.1 considers the strongest. I also play this counter gambit with the black pieces, and I have also gotten some of the tactical themes that we will see in this game. They come up quite often. Now, in this position, the knight is hitting the bishop, and we see bishop c4 in response. Now, after bishop c5, we see the counter gambit that is in the name of this opening variation. It's because white can capture this pawn on e5, and Pranesh accepts the challenge and does go grab it. Knight takes e5. Now, what does black have for this pawn? Well, as it turns out, after queen e7, white is going to end up in a bit of a bind. Obviously, the knight is hit right now, and it needs to fall back. There will then be pressure on the e-file against the pawn on e4, and obviously the white king is not feeling too comfortable either. Still though, the knight is going to fall back and sort of gain a tempo. It's attacking this bishop right here, and the knight would love to exchange itself off for the bishop, removing a very strong piece in the position. Now, before pulling that bishop back, we see another gambited pawn, pawn d5. This is very well timed. It's hitting the bishop right here and it's attacking when white is in an in inconvenient position because you cannot capture the pawn with the pawn because you are pinned right here. And if knight takes d5, then queen takes e4 check is really strong. So the only natural move in this position is bishop takes d5, which Pranesh plays. Now bishop b6. And this is kind of a patient move to play in a position where you've just sacrificed two pawns, but this bishop has the potential to be a monster. So Zhu does retain it, simply pulling back right here. Now in this position, there is an idea of knight takes d5, and since the pawn can't recapture, then you might need to capture with the knight, and then there's queen takes e4. So it's not surprising that we see bishop b3 right here, pulling back. Let's pause just for a moment and ask, what does black have for the two sacrifice pawns as things have kind of settled down for a moment? Well, for one thing, this knight is a monster on d4, as is this bishop here on b6. Also, all of black's pieces have pretty natural development. They control good squares and are really well placed. The rooks too can come to the D and E files pretty quickly and black can castle easily. I mean, black basically gets to do everything you want to do in the beginning of a game of chess without any problems at all. Meanwhile, white has a lot of challenges to overcome. You do have two extra pawns, but they're certainly not having any positive impact on the position at the moment, I guess other than kind of holding back black's pieces which want to get to your king. On the downside, one of the extra pawns, the D pawn right here, is blocking in this bishop, and that also means this rook is really hard to develop, and this queen has no squares to come out, and with no ability to move the C pawn or the D pawn, it's hard to see any future where it gets out. So it's just very, very difficult in this position to play for the white pieces. The computer already prefers black here, which says a lot that even with computer perfect play, black is doing well. 
And if you're not a computer to play this position perfectly with white, just about impossible. Here, after this retreat, bishop b3, black simply castles, super easy move. In fact, the computer prefers bishop g4, I mean, but castles is great and very natural. Now, the recommended move according to the chess engines, because there are not many very good options, is pawn to f3 here. Um, instead, Pranesh already plays a very natural losing move. But after pawn to f3, even if the computer says this is what you should do, it feels really difficult for white. Like you're never going to be able to castle because of the power of this bishop right here. Like you're going to lose everything to a discovered check. So if you can't castle and your king is sitting here and you can't develop these pieces, what do you have to look forward to? I mean, black can play knight h5, pawn f5, and just rip things open. And anyone who's an experienced attacker is just dying to play this position with the black pieces. All right, I'm a little enthusiastic. The bishop pins the f pawn, so I'll need to move my king first, but I have all the time in the world. This is such a great attacking position for the black pieces. Instead, after black castles, white follows suit, which again, already a losing move in this position. It's insane, but it again is a testament to how difficult it is to play this position um, for white. Uh, here, Supernatural is bishop g4 when you need to move the queen. In fact, the computers are recommending other solutions that give up material. But after queen e1, this is a great moment to pause the video and try to figure out what Jew plays. Well, here, there's a crusher. It's knight f3 check. Beautiful move and absolutely brilliant. The point is, that first off, you have a royal fork. You're attacking the king and the queen, so you really have to take the knight, or you can give up the queen, but obviously that's losing, right? So after knight f3, g takes, bishop takes, and all you need here is a queen check and its mate. And the most natural way that you're going to achieve that is with knight g4 and then queen h4 and like queen h2 or the queen can come to g5 how do you hold this black queen back it is so so hard to give credit to grandmaster pranesh with the white pieces he does make a very valiant attempt and i think he's very creative in trying to hold this position but it's just not quite enough in this game so after bishop takes f3 here i mean the computer is recommending the move queen e3 which if that's the best move, you know, immediately Botez gambiting the queen, then obviously there's no way to save the game. But I think that Pranesh does find more practical tries. Here we see pawn h3 trying to discourage the move knight g4, but knight g4 anyway, a beautiful move to follow up the first knight sacrifice knight f3. This one's pretty easy because if h takes g4 you just have queen h4 i mean the reason we brought the knight in was to bring the queen in and this is just going to be mate on h1 there's no stopping the queen sliding up to that square supported by the bishop so a better try knight e2 from pranesh now that doesn't stop the queen from coming in queen h4 but it did prepare a defense on this move the point is to try to hold this pawn on h3 because if you lose this pawn on h3, then it is just over, right? So after knight e2, the intended defense here is first queen h4, and then we want to bring a knight to f4. Which knight? Well, it can't be knight e to f4, and I need to make a point here. It's queen g3 that refutes this move. Keep in mind that there is a pin here on this f2 pawn. So if the knight ever leaves the e2 square, then queen g3 is just a killer. So instead of that, knight d to f4, a better try. So now the e2 knight is defending g3, and this knight is defending h3. And in fact here, I've been really hyping up black's attack. But if you don't play the best move in this position, you can easily start to lose your grip on this position and white can defend. There's only one move here that is truly crushing just game over level. 
and that is found by Grandmaster Zhu, and it is pawn to g5. Of course, this move makes sense. You are attacking this critical defender here on f4, but on the other hand, you are also loosening your own king. You've had the free attack without having to worry about king safety for black, but now there start to be hints that, hey, things could maybe go wrong eventually if white can ever get the pieces out here, and Pranesh does try. So d4, freeing the bishop here, and also freeing the queen, which is kind of a nice idea. And we get g takes f4, black regains the piece. Remember, knight of three check was a knight sacrifice, so this is regaining material. Black is not up material, though. Knight takes f4, and bishop takes d4. A super, super strong move. And this capture the pawn reintroduces the fact that there is now a pin here. So queen g3 check is in the air. Now, good try in defense, bishop e3. Looking to trade off this bishop, which would obviously be huge. I mean, a mistake that a lot of amateur players might make here for black would be bishop takes e3. And then white is even better because after f takes e3, everything is still defended. And now there's an offer of a queen trade and suddenly this bishop is under attack. So that'd be a disastrous way to play it. But after bishop e3, we simply calmly see bishop e5 from Zhu. And the point is, hey, you wanted to trade my bishop. Instead, I'm pulling it back and I want to trade for a different piece, the critical knight that is defending h3. I'm just going to take that knight. I'm going to take h3. It's going to be checkmate. You know, don't worry about it. Everyone gets checkmated. You know, just let it happen, right? Well, we do see a good try here. Queen a5. Okay, so after queen a5, there's an attack on this bishop. That bishop is defended, but okay, if the knight just retreats, that bishop is hanging, and the queen is hoping to slide over to defend along the fifth ring. There start to be checks on g5. Hey, maybe suddenly black's king could be in danger as well. It's at least a very good try, but there is a crusher. What is the move here? This is when you wanna pause your video what did Grandmaster Zhu play to just end things on the spot? I told you that this game was going to be over 19 moves, and this is the 19th move. This move is queen takes h3. This is so brilliant and beautiful. We've been trying to break down the defense of that h3 pawn. Well, it turns out Jews achieved that without getting rid of the defender because after the defender captures, knight takes h3, then you have bishop h2 checkmate. An absolutely gorgeous checkmate just with the minor pieces, the knight and both bishops. In fact, this checkmate has a name. It is called Blackburn's mate after a an exactly similar beautiful checkmate by Joseph Henry Blackburn in a famous game from the 1800s. The checkmate is the same, but I think that this game is even more lovely than the original immortal game that gave the checkmate its name. It's absolutely no wonder that Grandmaster Zhu was celebrating after this. I hope that you enjoyed this gym just as much as I did. If you want to see another of the absolute best games so far this year, then check out Grandmaster David Anton's masterpiece that is popping up on your screen right now.